Media Bachelier and I just wanted to do a quick little in-person face-to-face intro and I wanted to show you the painting that I'm going to be creating in this video. It is Bubblegum Wall. Make sure there's no glare. Well, I guess the glare is kind of unavoidable. That's it. And then the edges are painted. This is something you've, if you've been watching my videos, that you've heard me talk about. I like to paint the edges as I go. This is varnished, finished, ready to go. Just wanted to do a quick little hi and then um, show you the artwork that I'm going to be painting in this video. I won't be face to face obviously for the rest of the video. Um, I will be having a little chat with voiceover. So switch to voiceover here. Okay, voiceover Emilia here. Um, this painting is bubblegum wall, just like I said before. And I'm getting started by making these little scribble marks with paint and filling them in with just random colors. That's how I like to start my paintings. And it kind of just gets me to loosen up. It gets me in the painting mode and at this point I really don't care about what the painting is looking like. There's no plan. I'm just getting some colors down and those colors may or may not stay till the very end. Uh, but sometimes they do kind of spark creativity and I will keep some of those colors. They won't get covered up. And I'll keep using them and it's kind of like that randomness that just dictates the whole way. And that's what I love about intuitive painting is that every layer dictates the next. There's no plan. Um, but of course behind intuitive painting there's also this, I guess, unspoken of sense that you have some knowledge of, you know, composition, all of the basics, and you're approaching the painting with all of this knowledge, and it's kind of just second nature, um, so there's less thinking about it, but you are considering those elements, so yeah, I feel like I never talk about that, and some people, they ask me, like, how do you how does it just like come about? How does the painting evolve so quickly? And it, it kind of just comes with practice, I guess. Um, I get to a certain point where I start to look for the shape and where I want the eye to go, where I want the most interesting parts of the painting to be. Uh, in this case, it was kind of more focused on the upper right corner and sort of in the middle but the left top part and the lower left area is just less busy than the rest of the painting so yeah I'm working on probably the second or third layer and then here this is a discard extra paint piece and this painting actually turned out to be a really nice painting, actually. I love how it turned out. You can't tell from there because it's just scribbles, but I was just getting rid of extra paint that I had on my palette. So, yeah, if you'd like to check out what that piece looks like now that it's finished, it's on my website at www.emiliabachelierart.com, and I will include the website at the end and it'll be in the description below um, but it's called the carnival and yeah it, it turned out to be quite nice I did leave some of that navy blue that I was using um, sort of running across the middle but most of that navy blue got covered up 
So back to the painting that is actually happening right now. Um, I really like to paint with contrasting colors and complementary colors. And so in this case, I've chosen to go with blues and peaches and reds and greens. And it's really interesting to watch the replay of my own artwork because I see the process and it's almost like I'm, I'm thinking about the same thing that I would be thinking about when I'm painting. Oh, I could do this. Oh, I could do that. Oh, I could um, minimize this area a little bit and kind of bring out some of these other colors. It's funny that it's just a whole different painting pictured in my mind right now than what I know what it looks like at the end. But I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. And sometimes the titles, they just come to me while I'm painting. But this one, I had to sit on it for a while and kind of stare at it. Uh, it did come to me eventually. I mean, you can see from the video and... and everything and that I've mentioned that it's called bubblegum wall but um, yeah and, and that's influenced by the bubblegum wall or I guess they just call it the gum wall in Seattle so yeah I've never been there but I've seen it in pictures and I would imagine the different colors and textures um, mostly that bubblegum color which is what ended up happening with this painting. You'll see here in a little bit. Unfortunately, the very ending, the, the very last part of this painting, I wasn't able to include the video um, because it was, it started to get dark on me and the lighting wasn't right. The colors weren't showing up right. The color correcting wasn't working out for me, so I just ended up adding a little clip to show what it looks like at the end, and I did some close-up shots too. So, oh, working on this discard painting again. And if you've seen my other videos, you've heard me talk about the fact that I use different size brushes, different tips to get that those different sizes, the variety of brush strokes, and so that's what I'm doing here, making sure there's different kinds of marks. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and yeah, it's called Bubblegum Wall. Stay tuned for the close-up shots. Thanks, bye! Thank you.